I was aware that these great old 19th century timber frame barns were going away very quickly. I just felt called to leave my law profession of 30 years to go and save as many of these barns as I could. Ohio had the best barns ever created in the history of the world because our first growth timber, the oak, the chestnut, the beech, this is a really great example of a probably 1840 to 1860 hand-hewn timber frame. It's made out of mostly oak. The trees were cut down by hand. You can see the axe marks where they were hewed with broad axes to square them up. The timbers are joined together with mortise and tenon and then held with a wooden peg. These were erected by hand with simple tools and a lot of manpower. The double tie beams are a beautiful feature. That was just extra work, but gives this barn the strength it needs. It's very large for a hand-hewn timber frame. And we'll come in and we'll take all of the wood off of the timber frame, and then we will tag every one of these timbers and we'll do measured drawings and then indicate on the drawing which timber goes where so that when we take it apart and it's just a big pile of timbers, we'll be able to pick those up and look at the tag and look at the drawing and figure out where those go because when we put it back up, we want it to look exactly like it does now. Any wood that's worth salvaging that we can, can get out without breaking it, we'll find a use for it. Look at that board, that's, that's gotta be 14 inches wide. Uh, that would make a great uh, tabletop. The upper part of the barn is called the upper carriage, and this is the lower carriage. This was a bank barn. It's built into the side of a hill, and the lower level was to uh, keep the livestock. And that's why the ceiling's not so high. But the biggest, hugest timbers are always down in the lower level of these bank barns, and this is one of the more magnificent undercarriages that I've ever seen. This is a carrier beam here. It's 12 by 12 white oak. And it's supporting 70 of these huge sleepers. These are over 40 feet long, and they're just hewed on two sides, but these are magnificent trees. We get these great old barns that are really obsolete for modern farming. You don't store hay in them anymore. You don't thresh wheat in them. And most of the big farm machinery is too big to fit in them. So to make them last, they have to be relevant for the 21st century. So we turn most of these into homes or party barns or public event spaces. And to do that, we have to turn them into conditioned space. We'll have to put the timber frame up and basically build a house around it. This is a barn that we moved and reconstructed on our property. It's a bank barn built probably 1810, 1820. This is the lower level. This is where the livestock would have originally resided. We actually raised the height of the ceiling to give us more room. Typically, the uh, lower level of a bank barn is going to be about seven feet of headroom, and this is about nine. We get salvage uh, from around Ohio. That's a neat old sink that came out of a school up in Cleveland. That uh, soapstone uh, top on the island came out of a uh, high school science classroom up in Cleveland. We made the cabinets uh, in our cabinet shop. Here's a, a, a bathroom uh, that we put in, and it has a reclaimed chestnut vanity. Why don't we go upstairs and uh, I'll show you the really neat part of this barn. So welcome to our party barn. It's got massive 12 by 12 inch posts and beams. It's insulated on the outside of what you see. These floorboards actually were joists that came out of the St. Mary's uh, School down in German Village. This is a, a really great uh, smaller barn. It's about 30 by 30. This was originally up near Genoa, near Lake Erie, and we brought it uh, down to Central Ohio and re-erected it and turned it into this really cool house. 
we added some uh, reclaimed elements. This is an old uh, steel cart. It was probably from a factory up in Cleveland, and we made it into a kitchen island. The stone fireplace is probably the most imposing feature in the room. It's about 25 feet tall, and it has a, a hand-hewn timber mantle. These are, are magnificent works of art. They're handmade sculptures. I think it's a lesson in self-reliance that we need to be reminded of. I think it's also a lesson in community. One person, one family couldn't have built this. And I think in this incredibly divisive time in our country's history, we're well served to remember that we worked together at one time to build this barn, to build this country.